uh, we couldn't really, in a way, believe that we could get away with a, a, a book that doesn't introduce the Doctor until, well, I can't remember what page it is, but really quite late on in the book, you, you don't see the Doctor until then. Um, and then um, I've had a little toing and froing of emails with him. What a lovely guy. And uh, and he said that he uh, he really loved Ace and the Seventh Doctor. You know, he, he, he was a huge fan of Ace and the Seventh Doctor. So maybe that's maybe that's why he loved doesn't feel like, with that. It doesn't feel like we need the Doctor in that point because we've got Ace. Oh. She's in. <laughs> We know she's going to show up at some point, she's on the cover. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. And I think that's quite good because I think in, in our era, Sylvester was very concerned with the Doctor becoming more mysterious and not so much of a, um, like a, a Doctor comes in, saves it all, end the story. It was like, who is this doctor? And I mean, I, I, I remember having a few lines. There was like, Doctor, who are you? And then the Lady Painful in um, Silver Nemesis, the, uh, anniver the Cyberman an uh, 25th anniversary story, uh, she kind of hints that there's something a bit more going on that, with the doctor, that we don't really know who he is. And I quite like to keep this sort of mystery of the doctor and that there's something else that we don't really know about. So maybe, hopefully, that kind of comes over as well. Of course, there's loads of the green themes. It has always been through throughout Doctor Who, they've always championed that. Is that something you believe in? As oh, well? very like much, yeah. Greta Thunberg and all that sort of stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. Sort of if, if, I, if I could be Doctor Who, I'd have Greta Thunberg as my assistant. <laughs> <laughs> she, wouldn't she be a great Doctor Who assistant? <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I think, well, it's the most important question, really, of the day, isn't it, now? Yeah, I, I can see a few young people, uh, and you're the ones who are showing us the way. We've, we've messed it up, really, haven't we? And, um, and, and unless we do something pretty drastic, we're really, we've really messed it up for the future of the planet. And as you say, I think Doctor Who and Doctor Who fans have always been very aware of all sorts of issues as well, you know, green issues, anti-racism, you know, we, I think in remembrance of the Daleks, uh, Happiness Patrol, well that was a bit of a veiled Margaret Thatcher <laughs> <laughs> sort of parallel there going on. Um, and I think it, it, it continues. Um, and I think that's absolutely right for a, a, a series like Doctor Who, which is so well and loved, to be tackling uh, um, issues uh, from a, a bit of a different perspective in a way because you know the doctor has this um, global view of humanity and you know is, is the outsider who's come from somewhere far away and has kind of fallen in love with human beings and wants to, su wants to support and, and save and <coughs> help them in whatever way he or she can and so I think it's a brilliant medium to, to tackle those issues. Yeah, you do kind of see people on Twitter saying, uh, criticising the, the new series for being too woke, too political, but uh, have you ever seen any, any classic who? You have to ask those people. Because it was, it was there in your era, it was there yeah, before that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's always been there. Um, can we talk about there's a character, Will, who's kind of a, an old boyfriend of Dorothy's, of Aces, and uh, <laughs> Uh, comes back into the story and of course he's an astronaut because she wouldn't settle for anything less than an astronaut. Do <laughs> you tell, talk a bit about writing that character? Yeah, I mean... Um, is it based on anyone? Is it? No, not really. I wish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we wanted to have somebody who wasn't too cheesy as well. But he ha it, was for the, it worked for the story that he was an astronaut. Um, but, um, I mean, hopefully it, he's not sort of too two dimensional either, not just a sort of convenient cipher. I think I think it's quite nice in a way to have Ace grown up Ace who actually uh, has had a relationship at last because gosh, she always went for some dodgy blokes, didn't she? <laughs> I mean, remembrance of the Daleks, poor old Ace. 
She always chose the wrong man. <laughs> there was, yeah, there was Mike in Remembrance of the Daleks. He turned out to be a bad one. And then, and then Captain Thorin. Oh, and I have to tell you, yeah, she's, her catch is called Thorin. And we, we had to get a reference. Because um, Tomek, who played Captain Thorin, Tomek Falk, who's a, a wonderful actor. And I don't know who's met Tomek. Anyone met Tomek here? Yeah. He's the most amazing character as well. He's, he's, he's Polish who's been here for donkey's years, but he's still, a, a, you know, he, uh, he's incredibly passionate. And so we wanted to get some kind of mention of, uh, of Tomek's character in there. Um, but Will, yeah, we, we needed him really. Um, and it's quite nice to write a different side of Ace as well, this, who, uh, who actually got this really lovely guy. Uh, there's, there's, abs- there's nothing wrong with him. He doesn't turn into an alien or anything. <laughs> um, and, and yet, she ends up rejecting him, which I think is interesting, isn't it? Because it's like a sort of typical thing. Oh, actually, who has got the commitment problem after all? Um, so, yeah, it was, it was nice to, to write that character, really. Well, in, in keeping with her character, she's always fixing motorbikes and... You know, I had a technical knowledge of everything. Is that something you have as well? Do you, do you know what a carburetor is? Oh, oh I wish. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I, I, well, part of the reason why I got the part of Ace in the first place was because I got my motorbike license in, uh, well, when I was about 21, 2, when I finished university. Um, but I wouldn't claim to know about the insides of the car. I do, I do love, um, I'd love to know more, and I sort of, I knew my, my motorbike was a two-stroke and I knew, you know, I do know where to put the oil in and do all that sort of stuff. Um, but I wouldn't say that I was I actually had much technical know-how. Is it two-stroke, four-stroke, is it? And then it's yes. It a, yeah. <laughs> 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 Something like that. <laughs> yeah, we better just be quiet. <laughs> But yes, yeah, uh, that that kind of knowledge is passed to my older son, who's doing mechanical engineering. So he might he might be able to tell me a thing or two about that. But I like the idea, and I particularly like the idea of electric cars and sort of using new technology uh, to and and yeah, I've I've always I've always loved cars from a sort of um, aesthetic point of view as well. Um, sadly, not a you know they're not great for the environment, but you know. Uh, electric cars for the way forward. She's also the kind of character who's got a secret lab called the Bat Cave. Is that <laughs> the kind of thing you'd do? <laughs> you're, a, you're a fan of anything like Batman style outside of Doctor Who? Um, not a fan. I mean, I do love watching them, all the Avengers movies. And this. I have to, because uh, in my house, my, my husband thinks he's Thor, basically. <laughs> <laughs> if he was here, he said, What do you mean, I am Thor? Ever since he was a tiny a kid, he uh, he he well he cosplayed Thor in his on his um, Liverpool council estate in you know sort of the early 1970s. He had I've got a hilarious picture of him somewhere with a tablecloth around his neck, and uh, and he's got uh, um, he used to wear you know those cheese grates he used to put them on his wrist <laughs> for the gauntlets and then he used to get like a hammer like this. And then somebody, a friend of ours, bought, bought him um, uh, when the f- when the first Avengers movie started. You, know, you could get the merchandise, and so he's actually got his own Thor hammer by the bed. And often, often in the morning, he'll come downstairs with his <coughs> Thor hammer. Um, so yeah, sorry, that's probably too much information. Wow. <laughs> my private life. Sounds <laughs> Trump and sexy. <laughs> Would you like to read some of your books? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Should we do that? I'm Which bit would you like? I'm really down. Have you? Oh, well done. Have you, have you got some as well? Oh, I've marked up a couple. Um, oh, good. I like the bit where she meets the doctor. Like, yeah. They're not going to mean very much to you, are they? Though? Oh, just really patient, okay. Just page 67. I think that's worse. That's the one. The doctor, though. <coughs> They won't want to buy the book, then. <laughs> Give that away. Oh, yeah, here we go. We are in. Okay. Will, that's 
ex-boyfriend will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> will and Dorothy emerged onto a wide platform, looking out onto a vast, cavernous chamber that looked as though it stretched the entire length of the alien ship, the far ends vanishing into hazy darkness. Long, wide galleries lined the walls, connected by narrow walkways that crisscrossed the abyss. Dorothy began to make her way along the gallery, knowing that she was searching for something, but unsure as to what that something might be. A sudden difference in the texture of the walls made her stop, and suddenly she found herself removing her gloves, reaching out to a patch of hull with a distinctly different feel. As her fingers made contact, it was the same wet sucking sound that she had heard when Will had entered the ship. Sorry, that sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and a section of the wall in front of her suddenly opened up, slick flesh sliding apart like the iris of a camel end. <laughs> As she stepped through into the space beyond, oh no, I found a typo. <laughs> <laughs> Three startled faces turned to look at her. Two of them, a man and a woman, appeared to be in their late teens, while the third was an older, grey-haired man in a smart leather jacket. But it was what stood beside them that took Dorothy's full attention and almost took her breath away. It was a battered blue police box. Hooray! <laughs> the TARDIS unashamedly incongruous and possibly the most beautiful thing Dorothy had ever seen. The seconds passed, and as the breath returned to her body, she turned to the boy. Where is he? The boy stared at her in bemusement. Where's who? Are you one of the crew here? The girl asked. Impatient now, Dorothy took a step towards the TARDIS, bellowing through the doors. doors. Oi, Professor, come on out! The older man stepped across the doors, blocking her. Believe me, love, there's no one called the professor in there. <laughs> <laughs> they know me as the doctor. Dorothy turns at the sound of the warm northern tones to see a tall, slim, blonde woman in a long grey coat standing inside the door. Her grin was as bright as the stripes of colour across her top, and it was a smile of recognition. Dorothy, for reasons she couldn't comprehend, felt a wave of emotion. Who are you? She demanded. It's me, Is. Different body, but same <laughs> <laughs> What same brilliant brain and much better hair. You're the professor. Dorothy could barely bring herself to believe it. No way! Come on! Regeneration, you remember? When a time lord's body gets old or damaged, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Dorothy could feel the rational part of her brain dismissing what she was hearing, and yet there was something so familiar about the woman in front of her. She could feel her eyes beginning to blur with angry tears. Prove it. If you're the professor, prove it. All right. You support Chatham Athletic because your favourite uncle lived in Plumstead. You love motorbikes, although I never let you ride one. You taught yourself to speak proper because you wanted to sound like a Blue Peter presenter. <laughs> you can't see a Dalek without feeling a twitch in your baseball bat hand. You learn to love jazz, and you think being tall is overrated. Oh, and you hate clowns. She sounds pretty awesome, said the boy, smiling, while the girl and the older man swapped baffled looks. She is? The doctor's grin grew wider. It's good to see you again, Ace. Dorothy felt the warm rush of surrender. Blimey, Professor. It really is you. Shall we take a little break? And, uh, yeah, sure. Give you a chance to go and buy the book if you haven't got it yet. It is awesome. <laughs> yes, buy the book, buy the book, buy the book. <laughs> get a drink, get a drink, get a drink. <laughs> Five, ten minutes.